let's take a look at this example. Pause the video, read the question, and then continue with the video. It says, you anticipate buying a house in five years and estimate that you need to have $20,000 saved at the end of five years for a down payment. The interest rate is 5%. How much money would you have to save at the end of each year to have $20,000 as a down payment on your house? So we need $20,000 at the end of five years. We want to know how much money we would have to save at the end of each year to have $20,000 as a down payment. So we go through a series of questions. The first question is, is the question asking for a sum of money now or a sum of money in the future? The answer is future because how much do we need to save in future every year in the future to have this 20,000 saved. So we're going to say future. The next question is, is the amount involved a lump sum or an annuity? Are we going to make one payment or a series of equal payments? Well, we are going to put in a money some money at the end of each of the year so we're going to be looking at an annuity so this is going to be an annuity and whenever we're looking at an annuity we also have to distinguish between a ordinary annuity or an annuity due an ordinary annuity is where we're going to put in money at the end of each year an annuity due is where we're going to put in the money at the beginning of each year so in this case, read the question and figure out whether it's an ordinary annuity or an annuity due. This one is an ordinary annuity because we pay at the end of the year. Next, we have to go look at the principal amounts, interest rates, and the number of periods. The principal amount is how much money we need at the end of the period, so we know that that is 20000 What is the interest rate? The interest rate is 5%, but again, we need to keep in mind, is that 5% paid once a year, or is the 5% paid more frequently? In this question, it doesn't say anything about more frequently, so we assume it's once a year, so we keep that at 5%. If it was more frequently, we would need to divide that by the frequency, but we'll do question five talks about when the frequency is different. So bear with me. Next, we're looking at number of periods. So what are the number of periods? We're looking at five years. So five is the number of periods. Now that we have those three, we can calculate the payment. So in this case, we're not looking at present value. We're looking at the number or we're looking at the dollar amount of the payments that we need to make. We use a function called payment, even though these are future value, present value, the uh, function payment, so PMT, tells you how much is the payment that you need to pay to have 20,000 at the end of five years. To calculate the payment, you hit equal, use PMT, and the minute you open your parentheses, it tells you the order of inputs. So first, we input our rate. So what's our interest rate? We determined that it's 5%. So put five, and don't forget, you have to put the percentage sign, or you can convert it to a decimal and say 0 0.05, that's fine as well. Um, so 5%. Next, number of periods. And per is number of periods. What's the number of periods? It's 5. Present value. We don't have present value, so we put that as 0. Future value. Future value is how much money do we need to have at the end of 5 years, and we know that's 20,000. And then type. So it says, if it's at the end of the period, we have to put a zero. 
If the payments are at the beginning of the period, we have to put a one. So we know that this is an ordinary annuity, which means that payments occur at the end of each year. So for this, we end it with a zero, which is end of the period. Close parentheses, hit enter, and we get $3,619.50. What this means is we have to put in or we have to save $3,619.50 at the end of each year to have $20,000 as a down payment on the house. That's it for this video.